came from the next room. We had a, an event called The Sessions for two hours with Nathan East and J.R. Robinson, two phenomenal musicians. And The Sessions is one of the true supporters of what Can Do Musos is about. And my name is Don Famularo. I get the chance to travel around the world for many different companies, Mapex Drums, Sabian Cymbals, Evans Drumheads, and Big Firth Sticks. And these companies allow me to travel the world to talk and meet and inspire people about playing music. And the course of my travels went so exciting into over 60 countries. I met some people that have absolutely inspired me more than I could have ever realized before in my life. And I had first met David and heard him play and we were at a camp together in Vermont at the Cosa camp and it was amazing to hear his drive to play. And with the challenge that he had from birth, his drive to want to play drums and play music was awe-inspiring. Then I'm traveling to throughout New York, I get to Nashville and I meet a young drummer by the name of Mike Mignone. Mike who has cerebral palsy and has been using crutches all of his life and never had use of his legs, wanted to play the drums. So he got on the drums and he said, Dom, I want to play the drums, but I can't use my legs. I said, great, then we're going to use your hands. We sat down, he's a lefty, and we created the floor tom of the drum, which is this larger drum here, to become his bass drum. And we worked on the stickings and the movement so he can sound like a complete drum set without the use of his feet. He has continued to play, he ended up going to Musicians Institute in California, and graduated with honors. These are some of the stories that are powerful. Then I'm in Australia. Down under, in the middle of nowhere. That's where Australia is, right? <laughs> Just a little bit hard. It's a little bit hard. Right? <laughs> and as I was there, I'm traveling around and I get to one of my events and the event was on the third floor of a building, of a, of a theater. I'm giving this event and I meet Andrew downstairs, and he's in his wheelchair, and he says, Dom, I want to come and hear you perform and hear you teach and do your thing. I said, well, Andrew, come on, come on. He said, well, I, I, I can't get upstairs in his wheelchair. I said, what do you mean you can't get He says, there's no elevator. There's no elevator. You think that's a challenge? So I go down the lineup of people that are in line, and I look for the four biggest guys. I said, guys, you guys are carrying Andrew in his wheelchair up three flights of stairs. And their reaction was, absolutely. They jumped out, they grabbed him on that road, like a roller coaster ride. We get Andrew up the third flight, we get him in there. We had a great event, you were there, you enjoyed it. I got a chance to meet Andrew and open up my eyes to the fact that globally there are these musicians that people sometimes use the word handicap. They sometimes use the word disabled. And disabled, as we learned, is almost sounds like they are not able. And you know something? They are mm. at the highest level. So we like to use the word challenged. We all have challenges in our life. But you learn to overcome those challenges. So in a very, very cold day in, in Long Island, Andrew came out to take some lessons with me with his wonderful wife, Jennifer. Oh, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was below zero. And we come out and there's snow on the ground. So we get Andrew out and we get him back into my studio. And David came down from Connecticut and Mike Mignone came in from Nashville. We met at my studio. And we started coming up with the idea. I said, you know, guys, there's got to be something bigger here globally that we can connect. That's where we started Can Do Musos. Because what impressed me so much is their can do attitude. Their can do. Whatever came down, they said, I can do it. We can do it. We can do it. Can do. There's a term in Australia that's called the musos. If you're a muso, M-U-S-O-S, if you're a muso, you're a serious musician. You are into it. You're a muso. You're a serious musician. So we came up with the name Can Do Musos, and we went on right line and we got the domain name, CanDoMusos.com. We put together an organization that allows anyone with any kind of a challenge to be a part and have a featured page from the country that they're in, we eventually put together through the skills of Andrew of having Can Do Musos radio. So we have a radio show that plays music of everyone and then Can Do Musos TV. that we now have a video that we can do streaming live on the internet. This is powerful what we put together. It is zero cost to anybody with a challenge to be involved. Zero cost. We get funding from many different people. One of them who is here, Juice Fallon, who has been one of our incredible supporters through the years. Please give a round of applause to Juice Fallon. Thank you, Drew.
So imagine we did a GoFundMe to kind of raise some money, to get Andrew and his wife out here from Australia, to get David in here from Connecticut. This is incredible to have it. Mike Mignona, who normally would have been here, is from Nashville. He got snowed in. And it, not only was the airport shut down, but when he called me up, he couldn't get out of his freaking house. He couldn't even get to his car to get there. It was too much of a challenge. This is the smallest degree of what they go through. This is incredible that we now have a website with how many members? 220 family members from 24 different countries. They're on the website. You go to candymusers.com and every story that you see and that you read, if you are not emotionally moved, you are dead. Every story will empower you and give you a vibe and a push that will move you forward. I want to turn the mic over just briefly. Well, I want to just tune her. Let them kind of hear what's happening, of what Kenny Music is about. We want to then play some music for you, and then we'll talk some more. So I want to turn it first over now to Andrew Hewitt. How you going, everyone? All right. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from Sydney, Australia. Thank you. And it took us 14 hours to fly over here from Sydney. And I've got several faults in. I've been playing drama for 36 years. And Hold the mic up. And like, when I first started playing drums, there was no such thing as Google or YouTube or even the internet. There was no way of contacting other musicians to find out how they overcome their own physical challenges. You had to work it out for yourself. And as a 10 year old, it was pretty difficult. I started playing, listening to Phil Rudd from ACDC and Ian Payne from Deep Purple. From and like just learning by mimicking the albums. And we built Candy Musos to provide a resource for people who have challenges to go to and see similar people that how they've done it and to give people inspiration on how they can move forward with their music. Our idea is we want to get rid of the word disability within the music scene. We want people to take notice of a musician with a disability or a challenge. Um, in Australia we call it disabilities, in America they call it challenges, but it's pretty much the same thing. And um, then um, we now have 220 musicians from 24 countries. My role at Candy Musos is pretty vital. I manage the website, everybody that comes to us on the first protocol. I also um, host the radio show, which is online, and I also host the TV show, which is also online. And it's all just done in my little studio at home. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, um, thanks. And I'm going to play a little bit, so. Yeah. All right. Thank you.
Here's David Siegel. One of the things that we that we did when we first started uh, the the organization was we wanted to help people communicate um, and and be able to uh, play music with each other and we have several people that have actually because they've been with us like Dean and uh, Joe they've actually played um, music together and, and Andrew and one of our members. Uh, Dave Rollins from uh, Australia. So people have actually gotten together and played music and shared their love for music. And it's not just that. We've, we've actually gotten, um, gotten people work, <laughs> which, is, which is great. It's, it's not just a website. We, we had one of our members, uh, Jason Barnes, who's a drummer with a bionic arm. And, and um, the Audi people found his, um, they found his profile on Candy Mizos, and we actually referred them, got them his number, and he, he, he flew, they flew him out here and, sh and shot a commercial for him. And, you know, so stuff like that, that's just, it's just amazing for us um, to, to be part of. It's, it's bigger than just me or, or anybody else. It, it's become, uh, this whole big, big thing of helping each other, and um, I was, I was, um, I was born with uh, something called arthrogryposis, which which leaves your feet and hands uh, clubbed, and I had I had to have um, twenty plus surgeries to for me to eventually be able to walk. And they weren't even sure. So then after that. And I wanted to be a drummer, <laughs> and um, and I just practiced and practiced and went to Kosa camp and, and met Dom and met so many other amazing people, um, and it's just been a tremendous experience. And um, so uh, for two years now we've been putting this together, and it's just it just keeps growing, and. Um, and thank you so much for being here. It really means so much to all of us. Thank you. Yeah. And I got into many different types of music. So I'm influenced by jazz, rock, Brazilian, Afro-Cuban. every year. This is actually my 38th year of coming to this show. So can you imagine 1978 was my first year. I was, wasn't even born yet. Yeah, nice. And here we are doing this here and I'm back again. And coming out, we always, I always would see Joe around. He'd have his electric wheelchair and he's roaming around the floors over here with his chair playing drums. So when we finally put the organization together, we came out here and we got Kendi Music together. Jack down Joe, I said, Joe, I I gotta get you involved with this here. So Joe is now another board member of what we put together and a part of our team of Skype sessions that we have. And Joe, I want you to just tell a little bit of your story. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Is this thing on? I don't know if it's working. No. Oh, it's not now. Okay. No. Oh, it's not now. Okay. Um, no. oh, not okay. Um, yeah, basically, um, you know, I've been coming to NAM for about 20 years, and about five years ago, I came up with the idea to build and design 
a, um, a wheelchair drum kit, basically a hybrid drum kit that I could actually play drums and roll around, you know, be able to play drums at the same time. So that's kind of how this whole idea got started. Sort of kind of over the years has evolved into something that's pretty cool now. Um, and like Don said, I, I met these guys about two years ago, and you know, we, Don came to me and said, hey, you know, I got this great organization called the Kendo Musos, and, and I said, you know, that would be awesome, Bob, I, you know, because that's where my heart's always been at, is to help to inspire other disabilities, or other musicians with disabilities to, uh, you know, achieve their dreams and achieve their goals. And so uh, that's kind of how this whole thing started. And uh, I've been very, very, very fortunate to have made tons and tons of amazing friends in the Kendo Muso organization. Um, none, in fact, uh, like Dave said, you know, some of us have actually started playing together. And a, a perfect example of that is the gentleman sitting behind me, uh, Mark Goffney. Me and Mark have actually, uh, through Kendo Muso's, uh, connected and started to. Uh, you know, play together. So I'm gonna let Mark talk a little bit. Oh wow! Great. <laughs> play a couple of solos. Actually, I got a lapel on, but I can hold this if you want. I just wanted to be a talk show host. Hop around, yeah. stick this in everybody's face. Hey, you wanna say something? They're like, no, I'm good. I'm like, oh, no. Say something. <laughs> uh, my name is Mark Goffney. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Joe, I was I was hoping you'd do a little solo real quick, cause. Uh, um, I, but yeah, we will later. Um, my name is Mark Goffney. I was also born uh, different, you know, with a challenge of having a really humongous nose. And uh, <laughs> I was born. So, I was born without any arms. And uh, I started playing at 12, you know, and I didn't want to be inspirational. I didn't want to be, you know, somebody that goes, wow, that's amazing that you play with your feet. I just wanted to rock. Like, you know, that was the way to meet girls. That was the way to be cool. And, uh, and I loved the music, and it moved me. Um, and when I got the idea that I could actually make people feel the way I felt when I was listening to music, that I could actually give people that feeling, that's when I started, um, started really just diving into music. And, um, I was kind of avoided as a young guy, other people would, they say disabilities in America because the idea is it's supposed to be people first. So you say a person who uses a wheelchair, not wheelchair Joe. Joe's a drummer who uses a wheelchair. Andrew, Andrew's a drummer who also uses a wheelchair. So the, the whole person with disabilities idea is just that we do the, we, the, our identity is not wrapped up in, in the condition we were born in. Um, but yeah, as a kid, I'm like, I'm afraid if I got got around other people with challenges that, you know, they think we're like an army or people would, you know, so I would try to sort of fake it and blend in and join rock bands and stuff. And um, I didn't want anybody to pay attention to the fact that I played differently um, until I got a little older and thought, you know, a friend of mine said, he said, Mark, if people are inspired by, by what you do, who in the hell are you to take that away from them? That's not our right to do that. So if I can play smoke on the water with my feet and somebody thinks that's inspirational and maybe causes them to want to try to pursue music, then really it's not my job to try to say, no, no, I'm just a regular guy. I do play with my feet and it, 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 um, it poses challenges. The first time Joe and I practiced together, he came down from, from uh, this area to my house in San Diego and you know, my house wasn't accessible and he didn't have a buddy with him and I didn't really have an able-bodied person with me except my daughter and, you know, you ask your kid to take out the trash and I'm like, yeah, whatever, dad, you want me to move this guy's drum set? Yeah. But no, she, uh, the, the point was we had to figure out stuff together, a guy with no arms and a guy with no legs, like, how are we going to get all this shit in the house? Excuse my language, I'm sorry. How are we going to get this? How are we going to get this? So, it was a challenge and it'd be wrong of me to say that it wasn't a challenge. Then when I met Stanley Gonzalez and, uh, and through watching Dean Zimmer's video, Drummer Wanted, I was watching Dean in his video loading up his gear and dragging his drum set up a flight of stairs and I thought, you know, that's, that's what I do when I have to load my bass amp into a car. I have to lay on my back and shove it into my crappy Honda and um, I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me. I think in a way it's awesome because I'm willing to do that. That's, if that's what I got to do. That's, that's how I feel about it. So I've really embraced my own culture 
in playing with Joe and, and meeting Andrew and making friends with David and, um, and Dean and, and Stanley. You know, I've, I've really begun to embrace the idea that I want people to know whether they have any kind of a birth defect or a disability or whatever. You might have arthritis, you might have little short fingers. Uh, music has to find a way to come out of you. I said that last year. It's not just your privilege, it's your responsibility. If you feel it inside you and you got some little hang up that makes it difficult to play, just do it. I mean, I street perform. You may have seen one of my videos. I street perform sometimes and uh, I get all these people, I'm 70, I, I really want to play guitar. I can just get it. You can tune it. You can tune it so, you know, you can, you can play uh, an E chord with one finger. I mean, true, most of us true guitarists will call you a poser if you do that. But, uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, when I play, uh, <laughs> unless you're 70 and you have arthritis, and it's okay, but the point is there is a way. And, and I just want to, again, appreciate, Dom, I've watched some of your work since I was introduced to the Candy Musos last year. I've watched a lot of videos and watched some of Dom's work, and, uh, you know, the idea that you're helping people get their music out. There's a place in heaven for you for that. Um, yeah. 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 Because, because it's in us. And, you know, when I first started playing, I'm just going to show you real quick, you know, I was like, what are we? You know what I mean? Like one toe. And I finally, it took a friend of mine going, no, you got to play chords. You got to. You have to actually be able to use more than one toe, and it was a struggle in the beginning. I worked out a little riff with Joe over at his house, and that uh, just kind of... Uh, by the way, I want to thank uh, my new sponsors, Bootleg Guitar and Bad Cat Amps. Like, they loaned me the stuff to come up here and jam today, so let's give that a yeah. yeah. I drove to Joe's house, we jammed in his garage till his neighbors complained the other day. <laughs> Hit it, man. Yeah, yeah, right. Two, three, four. so much. We'll do some more playing later on. I want you to hear some more stories, okay? Let's come down here. Dean. Can I hold this for you? You got a lapel, you got a lapel here? Let's, uh, do we have this mic on over here? Yeah. Can you hear him? Yeah, all right. All right. Well, I guess I was lucky I had older brothers that <laughs> turned me on to such good music when we were growing up. And there were so many good bands coming around at that time. And I was just given one day, I just said, man, I heard some Led Zeppelin album, and I said, man, I gotta do that. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, quite challenging, you know. Hold the sticks, uh, had uh, many uh, drawing board sessions with that, and uh, finally at my school, I, one day I, my school board asked me to play at their school for a bunch of people, and, and uh, I got up with my guitar player friend, it was just he and I, and we started playing this Rush song, and 
pretty soon I hit the rim and one of my sticks went flying and, and then, <laughs> so I was trying to keep up and with the other hand and that and then I lost that one too and we just kind of turned around and looked at each other and he looked at me and, and he just picked up my sticks and handed them back to me and we finished the song and, and so that was the day I felt kind of like crawling into the woodwork, uh, but, uh, but just through perseverance and just having something that you can love, and I guess we're just lucky to love music and uh, just can see why not, you know, why not? <laughs> Here I am today with all these guys. And, uh, yeah, bring on them. Gene Simmons, thank you so much. Thanks, 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 and all my friends I've played with. Great, thank you, thank you, guys thank you for so much. Me. Thank you so much, Steve. We love having you. You can hear the stories and the intensity of all of their lives. This is incredible. And as I meet and have met many of these great, great artists in my global travels, there had to be a way to connect them. Well, you know, like everything in this crazy world, when it comes down to it, it comes down to how do you make it happen? Part of it, money is a very big part of it. You need the money to make it happen because we've got to pay to do things, to fly in here to do things. But you know, we find it. And I, 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 I said, guys, I'll make it happen. I'll find the money for sure. Just keep doing what you're doing. The support that we have, more importantly, is to spread the word. Let's spread the word. Get out, tell as many friends as you can, Take pictures of today, get the word out, and meet musicians that are in areas of where you are that may have a challenge, that may be disabled. And with that, if they play music and we can give them a featured spot from the country, when you go to the website, you see the scrolling down all the different countries, right? Andrew, we go down and you go country to country is an alphabetical order. We're not exactly right. We're, we're going to get a map of the world up there very soon, so you can click on the map and you can kind of see exactly it'll take you to all the different players. But imagine, they share the same story that they are driven to play music and be involved with music. They share the same story. This is the story that they share, that everybody else in this freaking convention hall share the same story. They want to be around with music. It should not be any different. So we need your support, both financially and getting the word out. Make it happen. Get involved. Little of, a t of your time will take us to a much, much greater place. The goal is for someday to have a thousand musicians from 50 countries. Guys, that about playing again for us. You guys up for it? Yeah. Guys, what do you think? Can we do it? Dean, you want to play? I'll try. Come on. Right. Come on. Waldine's setting up. We did a show in Australia. Mike Mignona said to me one day, he said, Dom, I want to play with you on stage. I said, OK, Mike, I'm playing in Australia. And we organized the flights for him, and we flew Mike from Nashville to Australia. And then contacted Andrew. I said, Andrew, who lives in Sydney, the show, this big drumming show, the Australian Ultimate Drummers Weekend was happening in Melbourne. So we had to get Andrew and his wonderful wife to Melbourne. They get there. I organized the drums with the organization to get me the kits up there, right? We put this together. And there's actually footage on YouTube. If you go there and check it out, I guess you, you, you type in, is it my name and your name? Uh, or, my name, your name. And Mike's name. Type in my name and then type in Andrew Hewitt's name and that'll pull you up to it. And you'll watch that. It's 10, it's 10 minutes of us performing. We perform together. I think one of the challenging things was we had to get Andrew over through backstage to set up to get him on the drum track. Well, the drum set that was set up backstage, that took up all of backstage, was Virgil Donati's setup. <laughs> if anyone knows Virgil Donati's setup, he's got Tom Toms mounted on the on, on, up in the, on a big rack and cymbals all over. It's a huge kit. So what happens? Four guys. I'm sitting there, and Pete was one of the guys who was the backstage manager. I said, Pete, we got to get Andrew from here, all the way across backstage over there. He says, Got it. They picked him up over their heads to carry him over the cymbals 
We're watching this, and, and I'm going, oh my gosh, this is completely out of control. They get him over, they get to the drum kit, they had to physically pick him up to put him onto the drum set. The audience saw that. We played, the audience went crazy, crazy. You guys played great. So what was powerful. 500 people standing over. Fashion. 500 people when they heard. The boy, in the room. <laughs> 500 people jumped to their feet to stand, which they could not do, to applaud to give them their great talent. That is the power of music and the power of can do musos. Yeah. Come on, crank it up. You play this. That's a can do memory here in the audience. Angela? Okay, Angela, where are you from? I'm from Athens, Greece. From where? I'm from Athens, Greece. Athens, Athens Greece. Greece. Wow. Nice. I studied here at Los Angeles College of Music. And we can start in July, New Greece. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Studies at Los Angeles College of Music with Ralph Humphreys there and the guys, right? You are with the best, man. Excellent. Who else is here? Lay it on me. Hi, uh, my name is Jeffrey Blattner. I'm uh, originally from New York, but I live here uh, now in Orange County. I have multiple sclerosis. Uh, I play the drums uh, first and foremost, and uh, I met Dom when I was 15 years old. Uh, uh, he changed my life then. When I saw him play, he was opened my mind to different ways to approach the drum kit, and then saw him 30 years later uh, in this condition, and he said, listen, I need your help. Uh, I'd like you to join this, and I changed my life again to be part of this and I, I, it's just meant to be and, and thank you so much to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. What about yourself, George? Well, it's a good way to get put on the spot these days. It's the story yeah. of my life. Of course I'm going to put you on the spot. Sure. Well, you know what? I'm kind of glad you did. Well, let's see. This is like my third now and the first time here, thanks to two people. My good friend Joe Hardy, who I met at MI, one of the best in the business. Well, I guess I'm talking for you alone, right? <laughs> and um, I was over at the John Lennon bus this morning just jamming away, having fun on bass, and just singing. and. Uh, who happens to come strolling up to me but none other than your pal David. He goes, you need to come up to um, 202A between 3 and 4 today. And I go, I'll, I'll think about it. And then um, Joe actually told me about it yesterday, so I gave him my word. So the fact that David told me a little something, something about it was just confirmation that I guess I was supposed to be here. And um, as for what I do, you know, when I'm not being a photographer, I play guitar, <coughs> bass, but my first love, foremost and always, will be the drums. Yeah. But I'll, t I'll tell you what, though. I can't really put it in the words, Joe, but just keep on doing what you're doing. Nice. And nice. Um, the way you play, there is no limit to what, we don't say handicap where I come from in California. We say handicapable. 
and Joe has proven that handy capables can do anything that we set our minds to. Great, man. George, thank you so much.
No, I, I have to disclaim myself. Absolutely nothing closer about playing that way. Uh, open to you. Know, you got my mic on? Yeah, no, you know, what, what it was for me was everybody would always automatically assume I didn't do that. It would make me mad or other, you know, guitar players, I'd be playing somewhere and they would go, open tuning, huh? I'd go, no, this is an A chord. You know, and because I, because I put the work in, to be able to learn how to do chords, um, I didn't. I don't. I think a lot of times, if you have a challenge, people will sort of make assumptions for you, and they'll go, "Well, you must not be able to play double bass, or you must not be able to." So I think, uh, you know, the idea about anything wrong with with open tuning is certainly not. Some of my favorite bands use it, and I think uh, really the end of my story was about any way we can get music to come out. We all have to do things slightly differently. I. Uh, I always support my neck with uh, a friend of mine made this. He called it. I call it a guillotine. And um, you know, without something like that, my guitar would go out of tune. And um, I'm all about any way that, that we can make our music come out. And uh, just for you, I actually down tuned this. If you want to jam, jam, jam a little bit for us, it's a. Uh, see, with it with an open tuning, you can just take one tune. And, you know, uh, you can really do a lot of. Um,
more than I did when I was healthy. I, I couldn't even do it then. So through that, and then and then through the drum sparks, Joe Hardy contacted us and said, "Hey, you know what's this about?" And then through Joe, Joe said, "Hey, you should you should really contact Andrew Hewitt over in Australia. There's this there's this great like movement going of disabled musicians or like a group of where they're like getting recognized. Like, really? Because that fits in. Because my mother who was disabled was on like the handicap committee. She was one trying to make changes. And so, so I contact Andrew, and I feel like the baby, because I feel like all of these guys have been a part of Candy Musos for so long, and, and it's only been such a little time since I've been a part. And so for Andrew and David and like Joe to say, hey, why don't you come to NAMM this year and join us? I can't even express how cool it is to be a part of a group. And like, I feel even though I wasn't like born with an extreme deformity, but it still affected me, and then I found a way out of it, and we ended up developing a product that is now out there so we can get other drummers who maybe necessarily can't hold a drumstick at the age of maybe 10, when like schools are starting to set up band, I don't want that band teacher to overlook them. Maybe, yeah. maybe get a drum smart, maybe get anyone with a disability, and it isn't cheating, it isn't anything, it's getting back behind the kids. So, I'm blessed to be here. It's an honor to share the stage with you guys. So, I think now in closing, you get it. Now here's what I need. I need you to really be involved. I need you to spread the word of what we're doing. I need you to find people that can make some donations. On our website, we still have the GoFundMe available and donations on the website because we try to get us all back together once a year here at NAM. I need you to contact NAM and tell them what we're doing. We have three times the amount of people in this room today than we had last year when yeah. we did this year. Yeah. So we're starting to get And what I want, my personal goal, I want these guys on the stage downstairs when yeah. you first come into the oh, convention yeah. center. I want them to for me. I need you and the company. Kathy, I need you to go back with your strength and needers. Kathy Collado is here, it's incredible. I need yeah. you to go out there and talk to people, get them involved. I know David is playing your product, which is incredible. We need to go out there and spread the word and tell people we can make this happen, we can make a difference, we can bring this to a higher level, we can showcase their talent, and we can make a difference, and we'll use them as our springboard to make this happen. Are you with me? Yeah! Do you think we're able to do this here? Name Joe Lamont, a very dear friend of mine, is the president of NAM. Joe L at NAM.com. Email him directly. Joe L at NAM.com. You email him, you tell him Famularo sent me. How do we get Ken Dumuzos on the stage down there? We'll do it every day when people walk in and they see them performing. This is how you make a difference. Yeah. Are you ready for this? Yeah. yeah. Do you think you can do it? Yeah. Are you going to be involved? Yeah. I've got a great round of applause for these great group of guys. Andrew, go over there. Hop on those drums over there. Joe, you're over here, man. Crank it up, guys. Take it away. Let's go. Well, I got one question, though, before we start. Yeah. You said Joe L, right? What's that? Joe L at NAM. Joe L at NAM.com. Is, is that like Joe L? Is that one word? Or? J O E L at NAM.com. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Go get him. He's going to love it. Get him tons of emails. Bring it on. <laughs> Can you turn that amp up more? Sure. Yeah. Come on, crank up the volume. 